Hi, I'm Stefan. Welcome to the Two Stack Developer channel. Until now, we've been looking at transactions and how to build those transactions to allow us to move funds between two accounts on the Bitcoin network. Something that we also briefly looked at was Bitcoin Script and its role in governing the locking and spending conditions between transactions that we have been constructing. Bitcoin Script is an incredibly powerful programming language. Um, however, if we really want to unlock that power, I think it is important for us to actually move away from hand coding raw Bitcoin script and move up to a high level programming language, um, analogous to how one would move from coding in assembler to coding in a high level language like JavaScript, right? In Bitcoin SV, there exists such a high level programming language and it's called S-Script. And that's going to be what we're looking at today. Let's get started. You can download a copy of Escript by visiting the URL escript.io. You can either click on the download link here, which will basically just take you deeper down the page, or if you scroll down, you'll find that there is actually a download link down here to, act, to get the application installed. You can also use the cloud ID, but for today's example and all the examples that we'll be using, I'm gonna be using the desktop installation of it. Uh, if you click the desktop installation, what will actually happen is you're going to go to the Visual Studio Marketplace, which brings us to my next point, I guess, which is that you need to install Visual Studio in order to actually use this. To create our first smart contract, what we, we basically need to make a new file, right? So you'll notice that inside my Explorer, I've got an empty project right now. I'm going to close this and I'm just going to make a new file. I'm going to save this file with an extension of Escript. I'll just call this to stack demo.script. Uh, and then the moment that I do that, this will basically be now um, an S script file, which, or rather, it is essentially, it will be picked up or recognized by the S script extension already. I'm going to quickly run through writing the contract, and then I'll talk about what it was that I actually did because we sort of need to tease out all aspects of it. So you can just follow along while I quickly type this, right? So keyword contract, I'm going to give it um, a name, two stack demo. I'm going to specify a constructor for it. The constructor is going to take an integer called um, y, and I'm going to have a instance, let, I'm going to call it an instance variable or, a const or rather a local instance variable in the same way that you have a class. It's not quite accurate, but it will do for now. So I'll just call that Y, and I'll say this dot Y becomes the Y that I'm passing in here. Let me clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to create the next thing is a public function that I'm going to call um, lock some funds. And I'm going to give this one an argument as well, and this one is going to take an integer X, and it's going to require that X equals the Y in the smart contract, right? And that's gonna be our, our contract. Um, we're going to talk about this now, about what all these things mean, okay? Actually, before we start talking about that, let me quickly do one more thing, which is to generate the, or to compile this contract I'm going to, what I'm doing here is I've opened up the Explorer, right? I found the S script uh, file. I'm right clicking on it, or in my case, uh, control clicking in on it because I'm in, um, I mean, on an, I'm on, I am on a Mac and I'm gonna click on debug. That's going to compile and generate um, the output for me. And if you look in the output folder, we have this file here called um, two stack demo underscore debug underscore DESC, which is for description. Right. In this file, there exists something which is going to be helpful for the next explanation we're going to be engaging in, and that's this ASM string. This file is a JSON document, as you can see. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, but the thing that we're interested in is this ASM or Bitcoin script assembler that um, I'm going to basically need to talk about. Inside this document, you're going to notice something. There is this variable in here called $y, right? And this is going to be important to note. 
let's take a closer look at this contract that we just wrote. Now, I apologize for the size of the text on the screen. I've had to shrink things down a little bit so that all the elements that I'm going to bring in can all fit together so that I can, you know, draw the relationships between them. Um, if it is too small, maybe just watch it on a, on a desktop or in a, la or in a browser, a desktop browser window, um, so that it becomes obvious what I'm talking about. Right, so let's first talk about this bit here, right? This is the output script. Yeah. Also known as the locking script, right? It's also called the locking script. This bit in here, these arguments to the output script, this is the input script. These are also unlocking or spending conditions, yeah? Then this stuff over here, this, what I called an instance variable, but which is probably more accurate to call it a template variable, along with the constructor which sets up that template variable. This stuff here, I'm just going to call it the output template variables. And you can, of course, have more than, more than one in here, right? So you can have multiple output template variables. Now, what does all that mean? Well, let's take a look at our transactions, yeah? So if I, if I just look at these transactions, and I then go and say that this is, let's call this transaction A, and this is transaction B, this is the transaction over here, which we are basically trying to build in this example. We're trying to to specify the output script that we will need to, to, to provide here, right? So we want this output script that goes into this output in the transaction that we're actually building, right? So I'm going to just call this output script over here, output, come on, output A1. And then I'm going to call this guy over here, input, B1. It's the first input in transaction B, it's the first output in transaction A. This guy here does not exist, right? So this does not exist yet. Exist. <laughs> Stefan failing at spelling. Does not exist. We are building this guy over here. And the output script here, or the locking condition, let me find a different color here to basically try and draw across both surfaces. Um, this output script here, yeah, this goes here. This input or spending, these input or spending conditions, these guys, sometime in the future, when somebody wants to spend this output script, they will have to provide these arguments here as part of the input script. Now these template variables over here, right? These guys over here, let me get the color right. So these guys over here, these template variables, when, if you recall before, I actually generated or I compiled this whole script into, I basically compiled the script, right? And when I compiled that script, I ended up with a document, a JSON file, that had this stuff in it. It had this assembler in it. And inside this assembler code here, you can notice there is this $y. Now this $y, it's no coincidence that there is a, a letter Y over here in the template. This $y is the variable that you will need to substitute when you are building this script A over here. When constructing this transaction, when construct, or rather when you construct the script that has to be placed into the output of the transaction A, once you get round to building it, you will need to provide this variable Y for the template. Oh man, I'm completely messing up the... <laughs> you will have to... Prov 
Come on, Stefan. <laughs> Choose a color. Um, you'll have to provide this variable y, okay? I hope that is clear. This variable y, and what we're doing here, this is just a little bit of ceremony to initialize into the contract the variable y, to, sen to essentially set the initial um, uh, conditions for the variable y, for the variable, or the, to set the initial state of the variable y uh, when we are using the S script JavaScript framework. So the S script JavaScript framework also has a um, has a library attached to it, um, uh, uh, S script library, which is a JavaScript library, and this JavaScript library is has a whole bunch of um, convenience methods and functions that uh, hide all of the stuff that I'm showing you now. But I don't like to start with the bits that, that get hidden from us. I think it is much easier to look at the stuff that is hidden so that we build from that fundamental understanding up so that when we need to use the convenience functions, we actually know what they're actually doing. So things like, like this here on the whiteboard the stuff in the template, we can either manually do this ourselves, right? We can either go and um, pull out this from the JSON file using our own code and then construct the output condition that we want to set here. Um, or we could use the, 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 script, the S script library functions, the JavaScript library functions, which, which basically will help us to substitute all of the variables in the right places. Um, instead, yeah? So, just to recap, the output script that we have here in the require part, here in the lock some funds uh, public function, the body of the lock some funds output function, <laughs> let me say that again, the body of lock some funds corresponds to the output script. So when we compile the script, this is actually, we're actually building the output script that has to go into the transaction that we intend to build. The arguments that we specify for the public function here, right? Those arguments are the future spending conditions. They don't exist, the transaction B does not exist, but in future, when somebody wants to spend the transaction we are building now, they will need to provide the arguments here. Right now it's a simple X, I'm specifying Y. So let's quickly see what this would look like, right? Essentially, um, script execution proceeds for validation. Let's say that sometime in the future, somebody makes a transaction B and a transaction A. What happens, usually, what happens in the script interpreter when it has to validate that it's valid spending conditions is that the input IB1, I'm gonna use this double pipe to mean concatenation, meaning that IB1 gets prepended to O a1. So the script, I should say, the, 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 the Bitcoin script in IB1 gets prepended to the Bitcoin script um, in OA1. And what this looks like then, let's say that we initialize this variable y to the value 2, right? Which means that we will basically have the script start with op nop op Oh man, I'm gonna run out of space. Op zero, and then it follows a two, and then it runs off the screen on the right hand side here. Let me move this over a little bit. <laughs> this is gonna get a little, a little bit. Oh, come on. I'm gonna move this over. Okay. Um, let me. Come on, move. Okay. I'll move this over so that it becomes a little easier to see. Okay. Let me just get back my pencil now so that I can properly write. Okay, so now I've got this script, which is OA1 in future needs to, or rather, once I've created transaction A, I've specified that the output script, the variable Y, has to be substituted, I basically substituted it to, so I've locked transaction A with something that basically says variable Y needs to be a two. That means that the input script IB1, which needs to be prepended here, needs to literally just start with a variable X. If I specify two as the input, then inside the evaluation function, which is expressed here with this require section here, 
there's a requirement that x and y be equal, right? Which is this requirement here, basically, that I'm expressing, which is that the parameter given by the input should equal this 2 that is in the output script, right? So this is provided by the, by the um, input script, and this bit here, this is provided by the output script which we are building. And that is how all of this hangs together. Yeah, so basically that, that is the, the, the shape of the contract. And that is what all of these things in the contract mean. Okay, that concludes part one of working with Escript smart contracts. In part two, we will move on to debugging the smart contract as well as deploying it onto the public testnet. I'll see you then.